This introduction to MATLAB will introduce you to the basic MATLAB interface, particularly the command window, which you'll spend most of your time, and how to save um, files to folders and import information from folders or change the basic default folders. Introduce you to MATLAB help functions and the Learn MATLAB tutorials that are available. Basic introduction to how arrays and vectors are handled in MATLAB. Basic matrix multiplication and a few other common operations. Now going to the MATLAB screen, one of the first things that you may want to do is come up to the window and enter full screen, for example. And what you'll notice with this interface is I have what is known as a command window in which will issue much of our commands. I have another one that tells you about what the current folder is and the workspace, which will give details on the dimensions of um, data sets, um, arrays, um, you know, matrices, vectors, etc., etc. Now, one of the first things that you'll probably want to do is actually change the location of the current folder. So, for example, I can go over here to the default location and bring it to another folder. You may want to have a folder specific to a particular course that you're taking, for example. So, this is how we do the quick change of the folder. Now, another way, another thing you may want to do is actually go to Preferences and change the default folder. So, for example, I can come over here, come to Current Folder, and so the initial working folder, I can change those working folder preferences. And, for example, you'll probably want to, each time you enter a, a MATLAB session, you may want to start with the folder that you used in the previous session. So that's what I'm clicking at this point. Okay, so then that will become my default for the next time that I start up MATLAB. Now you'll also want to be able to make use of various help features. So if I go up here and click on the help button, you'll see that I can go to documentation. And basically I can enter information similar to what you're learning right now. Basic introduction to MATLAB, how to use the MATLAB desktop, matrices, arrays, etc., etc. The other thing that you may want to use is this Learn MATLAB feature in which you can go specifically to online tutorials. You have the MathWorks MATLAB Academy and you can go to various course offerings, MATLAB fundamentals, programming techniques, etc. etc. Okay, so let me go back to MATLAB. Now a few of the things then I want to get across are basic defaults. So for example, MATLAB uses a default of a row vector. So let me enter a simple vector um, for x and it's 1, 3, 5, and 7. And you'll notice that that gets displayed as a row. Now if I want to change that to a column vector, which we use more often, then I can simply use the transpose command and that creates now a column vector. Now I could more quickly generate that vector using the following. Again, the default is going to be a row. Here I'm creating a vector of elements that have values from 1 to 7, but incrementing every 2. So you notice again I have the same 1, 3, 5, 7. So once again, if I prefer to use a column vector, I can use the transpose. Feature. Now if I want to suppress the writing of a vector, then I can simply do the following. So if I just use the same vector that I've been using so far, but if I don't want to print it out, then I can use the semicolon. You notice it doesn't print it out, but if I want to display it again, then I have this. So right now, x is a row vector. Now I can also enter matrices. So let me enter the following matrix. Let's say the first row is 9, 8, 7, 6. If I want to create another row, then I use the semicolon, and that's telling MATLAB then to create the next row. And I can enter 5, 4, 3, 2, for example. And you see then that I have an A matrix that's a um, 2 by 4 matrix. 
Now, another way that I could actually create that A matrix is I could have created something that I think of as a row vector, 9, 8, 7, 6. I could create a second row vector, it's simply 5, 4, 3, 2. And then I could create the A matrix using A1, then semicolon to create the next row, A2. And you see that I've more quickly generated that A matrix. That's how you can basically concatenate row vectors to uh, make matrices. And you can do similar things with column vectors. Now, if I want to do matrix multiplication, I can simply create the vector Y as the matrix A times the column vector x, and I see that y is a 2 by 1 vector with the following values. Another thing that's useful is, particularly if you're using large matrices and you've forgotten the size of them, then I can check the size. This gives me um, that the matrix A was two rows by four columns. Similarly, I can do this for the x vector. And so that tells me the x vector was four rows and one column. If you know you have a single dimension vector, then you can also use the length command to find out uh, the length of x. There's a lot of default values that you can use in MATLAB. For example, the value of pi is embedded. And notice that I have uh, five significant digits shown for that. I can change how that's displayed by going format long, and then once again, if I enter pi, then it gives me the longer format. There's some other things that you'll find useful. You may want to create an array of zeros. So I could create, say, a matrix B that has uh, that's three by four and has zeros in all of the elements. So I can do that using simply this zeros command. And you see I have a 3 by 4 B matrix of zeros. Similarly, I can form a matrix of 1s. And let's say this time I want it to be a 4 by 3 instead. So then I'm forming a 4 by 3 matrix of 1s using that command. Okay, so this has given you a brief introduction to MATLAB. I encourage you to uh, read and watch future screencasts with more detailed um, MATLAB information.